What's going on Facebook Live and Instagram Live? How's everybody doing today? Hopefully you all have had a wonderful day and uh, thanks for joining us for this next version of Conversations with the Boyds. We are excited to be back in front of you. It's been a couple weeks and we missed y'all um, and just apologize for the hecticness of our schedule and or just the um, the need to regroup and, and, and take a step back for a little bit. I know it's been a lot going on with us and me and Ebony and the kids and school and travel and everything else that's been going on and adjusting to my new role and all of what's been going on there. So um, we appreciate everybody's interest and attention and asking us where we've been and those types of things. So it's been a blessing um, to, to be missed and we missed y'all just the same, trust me. Uh, we enjoy having these conversations with the Boyds and uh, discussing different topics with you all. So it's truly, truly been a blessing to have this as a platform and to be able to share and just um, discuss things with you. But tonight, um, we didn't have a particular topic, but my wife has been watching this show called Black Love and it's been digging he into... He's been watching it too. I've he been, try to act like he's yeah, not watching I, it. Yeah, I watch it with her. And, and you know, it's like, no, actually, it's really a good show. <laughs> I, I really enjoy it because it talks about um, relationships from different couples' perspective. And it's been very interesting. We were actually watching it last night. Well, it was watching me last night, but she was watching it. And um, I just had the thought, I was like, well, let's do like a conversations with the boys around black love. Um, because, you know, generally people are very interested in successful relationships and how people have gone through some of the realities of, you know, what, what goes on in <laughs> couples relationships. And as you can see, we have our little uh, interruption which was our oops child. Uh, say hi. Say, say hi to everybody, yeah, everybody. Say, say hello <laughs> since you wanted to be on t on uh, Facebook and Instagram Live. But, um, you know, children are part of those relationships. And, you know, there's a lot that goes on that uh, leads to a healthy and vibrant relationship. And we're not saying that our relationship is perfect or at, at any stretch of the imagination. We go through our ups and downs just like everybody else does. But, you know, the reality is that when you're anchored in the Lord and you have a, a spiritual centering that is aligned, that helps to make it through those difficult times um, that you encounter. And also, um, hey, what's up, Kofi? Um, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a part of wanting to have a successful relationship, I think, that um, plays into it. But we're, we'll talk about a number of things feel free to ask us questions as well because what we were trying to do was identify a couple questions that we wanted to ask each other and just talk through that with you and online with you but if you have questions for us feel free to ask us we'll you know we'll try to respond as intelligently as we can but at the same time you know we're try to respond from a perspective of what god says through his word as well um, as you know, we are learning to do as we grow together in our relationship of 18 plus years. Okay, Koya, I know, yeah, you're getting ready to get married, so we're going to jump on yours in a second. But let us pray in, and then we'll jump into our discussion. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank, thank you, you for this day, Lord. We thank you for everything that has taken place in this day thus far, God, and everything that is going to take place. Lord, we just pray right now and welcome your Holy Spirit, God, yes, God. and that you would, the Holy Spirit, you Holy Spirit would lead and guide us, God, as we have this conversation, God, that it would be pleasing in your sight, God, and we just thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, all the honor, God, and it's all about you, God, not about us, God, so now we ask that you go before us and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. So just a couple things that, that came to mind as I was thinking about this and, you know, just thinking about the opportunity here to have this conversation. And when you, you think about black love, right, um, and it's a term that we often use. And when people, you know, comment on our posts and pictures and different things, you know, people reference black love. And it, it made me go back and look in the Bible because I wanted to see if there were any references to black love or God saying that there's a particular culture that love is connected to. And there is none. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to set the context of tonight's conversation by saying that because color has no love. 
color is an obligation that God has given us as a command uh, that we love one another. And I want to make sure that we keep love in its perfect context as God would intend it, you know, because I grew up in a household where, you know, my mother would have drove somebody crazy talking about, you know, things like if she can't use our comb, don't bring her home. Right. And all of those different things that we are culturally aligned with where, you know, families would tell you that, you know, you should only um, marry um, black if you're black, you know, and, and only, you know, marry um, people that look like you. And when you love somebody that puts those premises out of context or it, it blows them out of the water. And one of the things that um, was very interesting, you know, we've always and I have, you know, interracial marriages in my family uh, and, and you do, too. Right. Um, but I think oh, I um, think so. Can't think of one right now, but I'm pretty but, sure. I, I thought you did, but but I know I have interracial um, relationships and marriages in my family, and then, and on my side of the family. But when we moved to Ohio, it was um, a normal see for us to see interracial couples, which in Philly we weren't exposed to that as much as we are here. And, you know, again, nothing against interracial couples. I, I think it's a wonderful thing, particularly as you look at the context in which God expresses love and love has no color. So I, I, I think that that's an, an important part as we talk about black love, you know, because what defines black love um, would, would be a question. But I think the reason why the emphasis is on black love though and what you're saying i totally agree with it's funny you say that because that same exact thought came to my mind earlier when i was thinking about love in the context in which god commands us to love it has no color but i think the emphasis on black love and why our we tend to emphasize that is because there's such a breakdown in the black family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you see that, it's like you want to hype that up. Like it's such a great thing to see because there is so much dysfunction and so much breakdown. And honestly, I don't even really think that it's it's a lot of dis just dysfunction and breakdown just in the black family. Right. I think that's just what they portray. That's what they show us. That's what they want us right. to believe. Right. And you know that that's why I think us as the Boyd family and what we do having an emphasis and a strong um, focus on family and relationship and marriage and things like that. I think that that's um, an example of what, what you're talking about, because oftentimes what you see is the opposite mm -hmm. and what the media portrays is the total opposite of, you know, dysfunction, particularly targeting um, black families or the black community and, and how we don't have that, you know, um, that 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 partridge family look you know the 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 mom and dad work and they all i mean you know, you, all we really had growing up was, was the cosby's. cosby's yeah yeah and you know and then they try to mess that, that up with bill cosby <laughs> yeah that's I mean. a whole nother conversation but no and that's right you know because what what do we look up to we looked mm -hmm. up to cliff being that dad that most of us never had right and then Claire being this very intelligent, smart mom that also, you know, could do her thing and wasn't, you know, um, feeling like she was less than because she was just as, you know, um, professionally mm -hmm. um, aware and able and competent as her husband. Excuse me. So, you know, it was it's amazing how um, the media has put us into exactly what you said, a space where what is promoted is not what the reality is. And I think that when you do emphasize um, black love, that's one of the things that we highlight. It's not that all relationships don't go through challenges or, or, or um, other cultures don't have dysfunctional um, relationships or marriages, et cetera. We all do. But I think as we talk about what we express and just by the way we happen to be african-american or black um we are highlighting those things that we think are positive and encouraging and uplifting for a community that are watching what we do you know and i think that we all have that level of accountability um you know the bible as i said uh has uh, many references of love. Love is actually mentioned in the King James Version 310 times, mm -hmm. 131 times in the Old Testament and 179 times in the New Testament. And there's very many references that love 
uh, gives us instruction and also talks about how to love and how love is tied to marriage and how love is tied to our salvation and how love is tied to what God calls us to do individually and collectively. But at the same time, when you talk about love being connected to marriage and love being connected to the, to salvation, it's all one and the same because it's our connection to the one whom we are married to. And it's that bond that keeps us together. So, you know, particularly whether, again, no matter what color you are, that is a commandment from the Lord in terms of instruction for how to live right, do right, and have the right relationships. Um, Koya said, advice, I'm newly engaged. What advice would you say is key with a newly married couple? And what should we address before saying I do? Wow, that's um that's um, strong, Koya. Um, I'll let Ebony <laughs> tackle that <wow>. one first. <laughs> I think it's so many things that we neglect talking about before we get married. Finance is very important. Yeah. Agreeing on whether or not you want to have children, how many children you want to have, because yeah. those those type of things could be deal breakers and cause a lot of um. Hmm. What else? Finance, um, your faith, you know. Yeah, oh, it, yeah, definitely faith. I you, forgot you know, about that one. You, you want to, and, and, you know, the Bible tells us to not be unequally yoked. And, and that spiritual one. balance should be number one, the immediate foundation. And let, let me start, let me back up, Koya, by saying this. Um, I personally don't like to give people advice. I would just tell you what I would do if it were me in that situation. So for me in that situation, I would focus first on my foundation of faith with the person that I'm dating and or trying to marry. Because again, being long-term, lifetime locked into somebody that don't believe what you believe mm -hmm. and we're not on the same page spiritually, when, not if, but when those difficult t times come, you gonna struggle. Yeah. And that's gonna make it worse. And that's what leads to what are the statistics around divorce rates. But that foundation in faith is critical. Finances too, you know, not that finances are a deal breaker and what you do in your house is nobody else's business. So if you make more than him, he make more than you and all of that, as long as you both are clear and know where you are and what you're trying to build towards and having those conversations, that's critical. Third, I think too, even but, just working through, you know, you might, and, and typically it's that way in a lot of times in marriage, you have a person who's a spender and then you have a person who might be a little bit more frugal. But just making sure that y'all can be able to compromise on that type of stuff because that's a big deal. Yeah, and you know what... what when you... And being able to talk about it and be transparent yeah. about it because that also can cause a lot of... You know, if you have one person that's handling the finances but the other person don't really know what's going on... And then there's an issue, particularly, you know, as a woman, when we don't feel uh, that security, you know, or you feel like you just left this is left up to him and he's not including you. So all that kind of stuff, you know, needs to be, ta I feel like, talked about ahead of time. Yeah. And that, you know, that helps to mitigate some of the challenges that, again, will come. These these things you will face There's no if ands or buts about it, you know, because you're going to have the conversation about money when you get ready yeah. to do something or somebody did something and, and credit is important and all, you know, all of these things that like, nobody told us, right. you know, when, when we were planning to get married. And, um, it's funny because Michelle Obama, I, I was just thinking about something she had said, she talked about relationships and marriage and she said, it's important to marry somebody that you respect mm -hmm. and i totally agree with that because if you don't respect the person like if both of your common goal is not to see each other win right then what are you getting not, together for it's a competition like right. I, it's not gonna work <laughs> and you know it's a shame because particularly in our culture we tear each other down versus build each other up in relationships you know as one of one or the other trying to be dominant and we we you know emasculate the man in front of our friends and all of those things mm -hmm. and then now you got to go home with this person at, after you've already you know torn them down publicly and what that then does is create vulnerabilities in your relationship because everybody that's watching you do this can say man she don't respect him or he don't respect her and now you know when when the when the devil wants to creep in he has a doorway yeah. and sometimes through years of not talking about this stuff or not dealing with it the right way that is a wide doorway 
and it leads to destruction you know so the flip side of that you know yeah you could have the dominant woman but you also can have the men that feel like okay well do what i say and that's it because i'm the man right (laughs) right and that don't work either right no you gotta have balance you know and that comes also you know when you can talk about those things up front Mm -hmm. It leads to less of the, the, the challenges that you will face in the relationship. But then those become the challenges that you will face in the relationship. I mean, at the end of the day, you still want to have challenges in the marriage. Like, mm-hmm. it's no, okay, we're going to get all this squared away in the beginning. Because, two, you're going to grow. Or at least you should be growing, both of you. And as you grow, you change. And so, sometimes you might be on page five and he might be on one or you know vice versa but as long as y'all catch up right at some point and then, know what's in the playbook right. you know that's that's critically important too you know talk about those things that are uncomfortable and most people don't talk about things like sex that's, that's um, what carla you, said so you you know, i was getting ready to people get to people don't talk about things like children and people don't talk about things like you know future planning and, and what's your dreams what's your goals mm-hmm. what's your aspirations you know because a lot of times those are the things that we compress and that they were talking about that um on black love last night where you know it was like those hidden conversations lead to actions and reactions that the other person may not understand. I'm so glad you just said that because you just reminded me. That's another thing to me, and for me, it's very important because I'm like that's why I don't have a whole bunch of friends, and I cringe at like small talk because. I love to go in deep. I don't like to talk to people on the surface. For me, when I can understand your past and you can go deep with me, I feel a level of intimacy. And that helps me to even be more vulnerable and open up. But what it also does is it helps you to understand the person. Right. And why they do what they do do or react to certain things the way they react to certain things. Yeah. You know, for instance, let's say a person who is real crazy about their birthday, like, oh, you know, it's a big deal for them. But it could be that when they was a child, they birthday got overlooked a lot. So now that they're an adult, it's like, no, this is my birthday. This is a big deal. I want, you know, so it's that's, things that's, like that's that me. that you need you need to know because I, I'm the total opposite, you know. My birthday was always a big deal. To me, my parents, it was too much. Like, they went crazy. So, as an adult, it's not that I don't care about my birthday, but I'll look at somebody else like, you tripping. Like, okay, it's your birthday. Like, all right. Yeah, like, <laughs> see, for me, it's the total opposite because and my that's birthday... And not to say I don't get excited about my birthday, but I had a party darn near every year growing up. Yeah, but you know, for me, it was totally different because my birthday was so close to Christmas that it was either either or, you know, one or the other. And, you know, it wasn't a lot of focus and emphasis on that. So, you know, for me, since I've been able to, I've always celebrated my birthday the entire month of December, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like, you know, not that I'm having a party or anything like that every day, but that's something that for me. I, I say, you know what, I give to people all year long of myself and, and just and how I am. And that particular time of the year and with Christmas and all of that being merged in there, I try to celebrate and close out the year in a celebratory fashion. That's been my mindset right. since I've been at least 17, 18 years old. But so, that's stuff that needs to be talked right. about in a relationship. And, and the other person has to also understand right. it. Because, you know... You could brush it off and be like, you know what? I don't care about that because it's not important to, to you. you. Right, exactly. But if you know that that's important to that other person, then you got to get on board. Right, and that's, you know, again, if that's... they're important to you. That's, <laughs> and, and you, you demonstrate what's important to you by how you respond to it. And those are the things that, again, you, you have those conversations to make sure that you're communicating Mm -hmm. what is important and it's not just what's only important to me but you're excuse me are also listening about what is important to the other person that's in that relationship with you and that's what defines i think that that love how we do it how we promote it i think is, is what puts the emphasis on black love because again i think that there's an accountability that we have as a culture 
to highlight things that are positive. You know, we want to ha highlight, you know, manhood. We want to highlight fatherhood. We want to highlight marriage. We want to highlight, you know, the, the appropriate way to raise your children and to, to, to uh, live in a household, you know, amicably. Those things, yes, yeah, should be highlighted. But at the same time, we should also be transparent about when things don't work. Yeah. But not from the perspective of I'm trying to tear the other person down. Right. But using that transparency as an opportunity to build others up. And again, do what we're doing tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, have conversations with people that will edify and, and, and encourage. You know, there were periods of time in our relationship where we were at it every day. And, you know, not liking each other, you know, and, and, and not getting along, not speaking, not having mm -hmm. sex for months and things like that. That's not, you know, of God, but we weren't at the same spiritual maturity level yeah. that we are right now either. And that's another, you know, component of what I think in, in emphasizes the, the, the black love piece, you know, being able to, to, to grow not just physically or, or uh, you know, in, in, um, in time together, but to grow in maturity right. in Christ together. And that is, you know, I, I think in, in black marriages, we just don't do that enough or, 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 or place enough emphasis on that because, you know, it's corny in our social circles to praise God or to worship God together. But again, if you brought together that marriage under the right spiritual context, mm -hmm. then that's not corny. That's Christian and that's right. spiritual and that's what God would have to happen. But you know, we, we don't emphasize and focus on that uh, uh the way that we should. This is like totally um going in a different direction. But I love something that the lady uh said. You guys I don't know if you're familiar with the um I think his name is Kevin Patterson. He's like a comedian on Instagram. But anyway, he's one of the couples on Black Love, he and his wife. I forget her name. But anyway, um, one of the things she said last night, and it's funny because we talk about this a lot. And, you know, oh, yeah. when we talk about how divorce is not an option. Mm -hmm. And I know why we say it, but the she way put that she it. put the spin on it, I'm now really agreeing with how she said it. So she said, realistically, divorce is an option right. because you have a choice. People right. do it all the time. You know, even in churches, pastors get divorced mm -hmm. even. Um, but she said, what it is, is I'm choosing to, even with the issues that we have, I'm making a choice to, to, not. to not divorce mm -hmm. and to stay here and work through this. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love that. So I just had to share that. No, that's, I mean, I that's. I thought a, that was so awesome. That, that you is know, a, a it, it's true. perspective. And, I think, and it's really facetious for us to say that it's divorce not, is not an option because it's, it is an option. We have the choice and if, and it's a choice. If we want to make that choice, we have the option. She said saying that divorce is not an option is kind of like saying like I'm enslaved to you. Right. Like I don't have a choice. I, I have to stay here with you. No, I'm making a conscious choice to do this. Right. And, and I think from a spiritual perspective that, that, that is, what God shows us in our commitment in to the covenant, right? So God says that you are committed to this covenant to, until death do you part. And you've made these vows and you've committed to this relationship, but you have an option to cheat. You have an option right. to leave. You have an option to stay. You have an option to do right. You have an option to obey. You have an option to follow the pattern of what scripture says. So, yes, yeah, she was absolutely spot on. And it was powerful yeah. because it, it helps you to remember the covenant that you made. And you do have a choice. We make a daily choice right. to. I mean, it's a choice to follow Christ. Right. You choose to do that. He doesn't you have an make option us, not we to. We have right. an option. <laughs> right. But particularly for you know the the context of marriage, that's a very powerful uh, um, perspective to have, where you say, you know what, I'm making a conscious decision mm -hmm. daily to stay committed to my relationship to my uh, commitment yeah. that I made before God and to the other person that's in this covenant with me because you don't have to. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's basically what she was, was getting at last mm -hmm. night. But that was a, a strong statement and it really makes you, I, I think it, it, it forces you to think more committingly yeah. about your your relationship and your marriage. And, and again, brothers, I'll say this to us. We need to be intentional 
about how we commit to our relationships because there's so much on the line for us and not saying that there's not as much on the line for women but you know um the other guy had said something that was really powerful about you know how his father never showed him certain things yeah. um and and what he did what it, it was some subtleties that he did that taught him so much that his father probably didn't even realize he was teaching him by you know saying he said something um to the effect that uh, his son asked him, Dad, you know, how do you feel about mom? He's like, oh, man, I love your mother to the moon and back and all of these different things. Right. But at the same time, he then he, he was catcalling a woman out the, car. out the car. And then what he showed his son, who's a grown man now, uh, was that, you know, it's OK to be loving one woman, but then, um, you know, infatuated with or, or attracted to other women to a point where they're an object yeah. and not a person. And that was really powerful, too. But that's why I think black love is so important, particularly for our little black boys, because we have not. And, and, and again, society, music, rap, media, YouTube, everything points to make objectifying women. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, again, when, as I grew up, you know, it was the same type of thing. And I lived that lifestyle. All of the men and dudes that I grew up under was it was more about quantity over quality and it was you know the, the the emphasis even when i was deciding to get married some of the same guys was like man what you doing that for you got all these girls that you know and all that kind of stuff but they were trying to discourage me from doing the right thing of not objectifying women or trying to make the whole package woman out of all of the different women that i was messing with to try and use you know certain women for certain qualities and characteristics to put them all trying together, to the hoe, trying, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> the, the build a hoe. Uh, but you know, the, but no, that's that. That is how we are raised. But we have an obligation, men, I think, to turn that around and 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 be different, be better. You know, and I, I've also always been conscious about that. Even, you know, when I'm with my oldest son, we'll see a little girl that's cute and everything, and I'll look at him to see, you know, what his reaction is going to be. And he'll look at me to see if I'm going like, you know, give him the eyebrows up or the nod or something like that. Like you checking her out, but not to make making sure intentionally that I'm not teaching him to objectify women, but to appreciate the qualities in a woman that makes us attracted to them, that to want to pursue them as a wife, but not as just some some joint that we messing with. You know, that that I, I, I want to do different uh, than what I was taught and how I was. Big well, yeah, you, you know, they, they, they we do just like, you know, you, just like, you know, you, you, you look at uh, telling, telling, uh, uh, your daughter, I knew you was that, about to uh, bring that up, you know, so just go ahead. uh, some, some, some Negro is fine. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? I, but, let's but, clear this up right mm -hmm. now. I did not tell her that. Well, okay. So the conversation was this y'all. Um, she was we talking had about to tell the whole conversation. So, so here, well, here, look, I'll fast forward to the end. So my daughter says they're trying to figure out who this guy is that, um, that, that looked like somebody or so-and-so. And my daughter says, oh, oh, mom, you're talking about the guy that you all, always Not say all. she, she's mom. Jayla, that you remember always... how girls are with their mom too. She be trying to start arguments. Listen, so she, Cause that was a lie when she said she the said, always mom, part. The, the, the guy that you always say is fine. I'm like, oh really? Who you always saying is fine. So, you know, we identify who it was. I'm like, oh wow, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, you, you, you got this guy that you telling your daughter that he's always fine. But, but what are you teaching that. her about your your husband or, or you know what did, what did she say how often do you say oh, daddy's fine Jesus. i mean i don't have to be fine you know i'm i'm cool being where i am i know my space but you know first it, of all it, i don't even think that this particular person is fine well apparently <laughs> so, uh between you and Jayla, like, see and that's that mommy daughter thing too you know where they have little conversations about things that daddy and and, and daughter don't talk about mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. came out mm -hmm. that night but that again so you know when you go through these Jayla things trying to tear us apart it, see, see <laughs> but that that's a part of that's a part of black love you know but no but you know what in, in all seriousness with that context, right, wrong, and indifferent, we have to be careful what we're teaching our children about what goes on inside our relationships as well. Because if that's say what... Hi to Carla. Say hi to Miss Carla. Say hi to Miss Carla, Jace. She don't she, feel good. <laughs> but if that's, you know, if, if that's what 
our children are picking up from, you know, how we might look at somebody on TV and, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, so-and-so, she bad, you know, and it's like, if I'm showing my boys that, but I don't ever say, you know, how sexy my wife is or different things like that to show them who the number one is, then that's a problem. You know, we, we have to be very careful about that because that is what they then perpetuate and then they take into their lives and their relationships. And then again, it becomes that objectification of men or women and their playing out of what, you know, might come out of their relationships. So we, again, just it's things that we have to be mindful of that we want to make sure that we promote, even if that's the reality. Like, you know, I we even had the discussion about this whole, you know, man crush Monday and Woman Crush Wednesday and all that other that's kind of stuff. That's going a little bit too far for me. Don't be putting nobody up talking about that's your uh, Woman Crush on uh, Wednesday or right. Man Crush Monday. No, we ain't finna do that over here. Right, but that's, you know, <laughs> pe people do it and don't realize and, and the honestly, implication of that. I don't have a problem with if my husband said somebody was attractive. In fact, I'm, I point people out and I'm like, oh, she's so pretty. But I can tell you that he, he don't say a word. That's not my thing because... <laughs> Again, you know, yeah, there are other attractive women out there and those types of things. But why would I put that thought in your mind that I'm attracted to somebody, whether they're accessible to me or not? Superstar, model, whatever. There's a, a ton of women out there that I could be like, oh, yeah, that's my. But I my see, I don't look at it as saying like I'm attracted to the person. I'm just because but that's, that's just like if I gave somebody a compliment out on the street and uh, I because there were. No, nah, that's different. Like to me, it's not. I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, like, no. I, and I've heard, I've seen women who do it, like, girl, oh my god, he is so fine. Like, I'm not really that person, but I mean, if somebody is nice looking, then I'm gonna no, say, I'm, I will and, say and I'm it. complimenting someone's looks versus lusting over them for you know, oh they fine, and I would leave, or you know, if they came in here tonight, they could get it, like you know, and we've been in those <laughs> conversations with people. I'm like, really, your husband standing right there? Are you serious? Like, do you, I mean, and, 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 and they'd be okay right with though, that. Because people look at it. Like, I mean, I feel like even I might've looked at it like that before. Like, oh, well, I know I ain't never going to have that person. So, but no, it you does matter. It really does matter. It does. Because that person could be somebody else that you do have access to, you know? And it's like, if that's your mindset, whether that person is there or not, if you have that level of attraction to a person, it opens up the door for that. Right. So, you know, in, in, in the capacity of shutting it down, that it's not even an option, don't even set it up like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I wouldn't ever respond to, yeah, you know, Serena Williams or this one or that one or, or you know, all right, so that's you fine. you let the cat out the bag. I ain't let the Serena cat out the bag. bag you Serena know. Williams. But, so, oh, let me, let, let me, first name, let me run the list. The first name out of Serena my Williams. <laughs> Um, um, what's the girl that play on? Uh, is that, no, but you, but it, it, the list could be very long, is what I'm saying. You know, but you could start naming people, but okay. then why would you sow that seed? Because now, I'll be Serena Williams. It, it, but that's and that's whoever. the point. You better be whoever that is, and and let me stop. But no, I mean, you know, we 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 do. Yeah, right. I see you call it like Denzel Idris, right? But then, how does that make your man feel when you sitting there and y'all watching a movie together, and that person is there? Like now, that person might be thinking what's going through your mind as you're watching this person, and then you might be watching a movie that has a very passionate sex scene. So now, are you lusting over that person, which is a sin? So again. Not trying to shut nobody down, but we need to be able to shut it down when it gets to the point where it is disrespectful and it opens up the door for those types of things that cause issues in your relationship. And it's those subtleties that we don't even realize creep in that create the damage. Um, Morgan was you saying, right, boo, you right. no, you don't have that, that. No, that's fine. Because when you find yourself. When but, I find myself, what? Yeah. Uh, you know, what? That rap. No. <laughs> now he tripping. Nah, but you know, I'm 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 committed. I'm committed to the long haul. You know, I'm. I'm Don't at... say it like it's painting you. Oh gosh. <laughs> 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 nah, but you know, we we really um have to keep things in in this context. You know, well, it's it's all good it's all right to have fun uh and and really enjoy being in your relationships, but you know, it's also important to keep things in this appropriate context that it doesn't create uh damage in your um relationship i'm trying to get back to what 
Willie said. Morgan said, yeah, you know, talk about finances and all of that stuff, even uh, the, the position of the toilet paper. And, and we talked about that before, Morgan, like that position of the toilet paper thing will, will end That'll relationships break somebody. and break up families and the whole nine. Um, that, no, but on a serious note, some of them little small things really can be real big sometimes. That's true. That's true. I mean, it could, those little things could be the, the ultimate deal breakers because you use that and then it mushrooms but into something larger. sometimes we can't be so petty that we allow it. Because most of the time, the small stuff that make us go off is really something larger at the root of it. Right, right. No, but it, it's the compound of, you know, a number of things that we let go unaddressed. Yeah. And, you know... But when, I mean, too, that's where... That's when the... I don't know. That's when the compromise comes in, too, I would say. Because it's some little things that drive him crazy that don't really affect me but and I could just let it go but because if it's really affecting him it's like all right yeah Willie says stop like squeezing the the toothpaste (laughs) in the middle (laughs) I mean yeah you but my kids do that I'm glad they got their own bathroom and their own tube of toothpaste because that's annoying it's it's stuff like that you're absolutely right well I mean it's you know those little minor things like leaving the um pod in the in the cure you know that could be the, the no but you're point. petty about it okay so now that we gonna leave in the pod in the in the cure thing about it <laughs> because <laughs> i do forget sometime not i don't do it every single time and it's legitimately like Jam- i'm not a morning person the first thing i do when i get up is go to the cure so half the time i'm half asleep going downstairs to do something for him <laughs> and then he want to be petty so if i leave it in there instead of him throwing it in the trash he got to sit it next to the cure egg so i know that i left it in there but that's petty. when i when i leave it there and it's then, after it's after i already thrown it away a couple times now that, that is, is not true because no, like yes you it did is. it sunday and i knew i left it in there right, but, but i didn't come downstairs so how is that not true because i didn't come downstairs no but how is that not true because if i, if I just said it, it, see times. this is the stuff y'all see y'all and started oh this my God. so if i just if i and just I, said and I, so look, <laughs> and I don't like that you won't throw yours in the trash can but because you still i leave said, them to cool off before throwing them in the trash because but this is again I, see I these are those these are those little things that that could <laughs> and i just throw it in the trash i could crazy. leave it there for you, you to throw it in the trash you, you but could. i'm not petty like and that you could right petty LaBelle. but you gotta leave the, the pot no. sitting right next to that, the just a reminder cure it. that's just a reminder that, but has it worked has yes it make, it, do it make me remember it if does. i forget i forget but if you so the percentages of change no instead they of going have not because you just yourself said if you're going from 100% and leaving in there to 20%, on to, the next, uh, to 20%, Carla, that's an Carla, don't, he's not reminding me. He just being petty. Carla, no, nah, that, no, nah, I'm, I'm reminding her and I'm helping her to, to improve. Um, let me see. what you say, Grant? My thing is going crazy when they leave time on the mic. <laughs> Instead of hitting, hitting cancel. <laughs> now, that's real petty. <laughs> But I don't like that. <laughs> that. That's a first. I've never seen nobody get mad about that. I mean, it's like th- no. But think of, think about it like this, Grant. Like so, <laughs> they left the time there for you. That was being considerate. They they thought that you could use the time, or they wanted to make sure that they left a little bit mm-hmm. over for you. Oh my God! But you know, seriously, it's those things that can can really drive a relationship into a tailspin if we don't talk about them or if and we don't if you let it if, if you let it because or if you don't i'm have probably going to leave that pie in the thing again i She'll might do it intentionally do it tomorrow, tomorrow right just see? because he's trying Pet- to see petty labelle <laughs> petty cruiser so yeah you know that's that's what that's what that's what people do but you know what the other thing too is and, and it's important i'm glad you said that <laughs> Because a lot of times, too, in, in relationships, when people know what button to push, they'll push it intentionally. Not that, you know, well, it could be trying to be petty, you know, but at the same time, those are things that you need to be able to verbalize and check. Like, you well, know, okay, I'm why do you... I'm to tell you that I don't do that. No, and, and, and I'm not saying... No, I, 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 I know you don't. Um, I know you don't. Because I used to work... 
the funny thing about that is before we even had a Keurig at our house, when they first came out, we had one at our job. And I was the person in the office getting on everybody for leaving a pod in there. So be careful sometimes even about the things that you be hard on people about. Right. Because you will find yourself doing the exact same thing that you didn't like. Right. No, and you know, it, it's it's amazing the evolution of, of relationships, you know, because like my wife said earlier um, in the broadcast, we there were certain things that, you know, I felt like as a man, I didn't have to talk to her about, you know, like buying a car and doing different things. I remember coming home one time, I had gone to the dealership for service or something like that. And I came home with a new car because they were talking to me, but I never picked up the phone and was like, hey, you know, I'm getting ready to do this. What you think? And, you know, I actually did that today, which, you know, was and we, we've done it many times since then but it was just like i remember going back to a period in our marriage where you know we weren't on the terms that we're on right now and i was just like you know she ain't paying for it i don't need to ask or check in yeah. but now it's like you know those things are are important because i'm like okay if i buy this car then what is that going to do with the other car and you know how are we going to manage doing this and that so it's it's evolved to a point where and it, it feels good to be able to do that like if i would have came home with a new car today and she was like well what happened with that you know how <laughs> i do, probably would have i would have been coming to philly <laughs> you know how does how does that make her feel you know and that that's the sensitivity that we need to have brothers and sisters you know because sometimes women do that stuff too like you know i make my i make my own money i don't need that you know but Having that conversation about things that's going to impact your household one way or another, directly or indirectly, are very critical and very important. Um, what you say, Carla Lucky? Carla said she don't want to. She said she don't want to cook. You better cook for that man. Hey, Carla, <laughs> uh, listen, listen. Don't work. Don't eat. Look, <laughs> you better cook for him. Lucky, you you said you went through that a year ago, and and it's still an argument. Yeah, man, it perpetuates. You I'm know? gonna tell you that. So. It, that type of stuff is a lasting damage. Mm -hmm. And what it does, I'm just from a woman's perspective, when a man does that, there's a level of trust in that area that we lose. Mm -hmm. And we start to feel like every time, every, that, that that's the situation that's always going to happen. It just feels just really disrespectful. And it feels like, well, I don't have to talk to you about it. I about can do that, what I right. wanted. Like, th like he said, this is my money. Like, I don't have to have this conversation with you. Right. It goes both <laughs> ways. You know, it was like uh, we had a situation where she had made a decision um, about something for my son and didn't check in with me. And it was like, no, nah, I'm not trying to negate the, your decision making capacity but i wanted to make sure that you had my perspective on right. that before you made the decision it wasn't going to change the decision anyway i'm okay with that but here are some of the implications that's going to ultimately impact me if that decision goes bad and i just wanted you to make sure you thought about that before you say yes or no and that those things again i it, it comes with a level of maturity mm -hmm. and it comes with a level of you know what how does this impact other people no matter if it is for me, you know. And it's just about respect. It's respect. It's common courtesy. It's saying that I'm considering how you feel about this too. It's right. not just me. You know, I was having even having a conversation um, a few months ago with some wives and even just talking about how, you know, when you're going somewhere, do you mm -hmm. tell your spouse that you're going and it's not a control thing or because I'm trying to get permission, it's but concern, it's respect, respect yeah. and concern if something could happen, anything, right. you know, right. I'm, and, you I'm know, not, you don't just walk out the house. I'm not just going to leave out the house. I mean, we do it now. Like if I'm just running to the store and he in the house, I don't just leave out. I say, I'm going, I'm going to the store. I'll be right, right. back. And it's, I know, might stop somewhere else along the way. I, it's not saying like, I got to pick up the phone and say, Hey, I stopped at uh Dunk Donuts before I went to Kroger. No, I mean, you don't have to do that. It's not, but it's just that, that respect. And it, it, it what it is, is it, it builds a level of trust and communication that most relationships or that society tells you is the corny thing to do mm -hmm. or that, you know, you the man, why are you checking in? Because God forbid something happens to me while I'm out, my wife needs to be informed, you know, or, you know, at least if, if the police got to come and, and trace a timeline, she could say, well, the last time I talked right. to him was 45 minutes ago and he said that he was going here. You know, those types of things are important and critical. It's not corny, but we I, tend oh. to play into 
what other people think and what other people say to us. And then, you know, we get built up and that's the devil yeah. that, that gets in that because it's like, well, who, 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 why do you need to check in with her? Right. Well, it's the same thing with prayer. We touch base with God or should be communicating with God about everything. And that, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, relative to decisions, if I'm, if I'm buying a, a shirt, if I'm buying a car or a house or something that, you know, I, I consult with God on everything, mm -hmm. or at least I try to. And I always, and, and people will tell you I, when, when I, even at the car dealership or other places, I'll be like, I got to pray about that. You know, we get back to you. We're not going to make no snap decision. It, the, God was at our house trying to sell us windows. I'm like, well, we got to pray about that. That's a pretty, you know, hefty expense. And he's like, well, you, if you don't sign on right now and, you know, uh, you're going to lose out on the discount and all that, I said, well, we got to pray about it. Right. And if the Lord don't say so, then we're not moving on it. I try to pattern that into everything that we do. Same thing in your relationship because your relationship, if you're married, is a mirror of salvation. Mm -hmm. So the same level of communication that the Lord expects us to have with him in building that relationship, we ought to do the same with our mate. So that they're clear about the direction. So that they're clear about where we're going. Even if we may not agree on it. Right. It's like, maybe we shouldn't do this right now. But if I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, you know, but the timing is, we're not going to have the same opportunity later. And she feels uncomfortable. I'm going to take that into consideration. Because, again, my ultimate board of directors is my household, my family. You know, and what, what matters there is, is what's more critical than, than other places. I was just going to say, piggybacking on that, you know, even the checking in part, I think it's particularly very important when there's been infidelity or a break in trust in a relationship mm -hmm. to do that. One of the things that he, well, did he, I think you still do it, but one of the things that he did a lot um was he would email me, copy me on emails from work when he had board meetings or certain things that he had to do that was outside of his work hours. So I knew that he was this place or that place. That's very important to gain that trust back, mm -hmm. especially if there's been infidelity in your relationship. Yep. Because if she you ain't read just, the email, but you, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> he just trying to start. <laughs> But if if you, you know, you get off at five o'clock and it's seven and your wife is sitting home expecting you to be home or your husband is sitting home expecting you to be home and you're not there. Now, in this, this right. window of time and opportunity and space where you can revert back to some old ways and, and that's going to be the first thing in the mm -hmm. person's head, then instead of going through all that, then right. why not just. Have that line of communication. And that's correct. I, you know, and again, it, I, I can't emphasize enough how important that is just to develop a level of comfort mutually. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a man thing. It's not a black thing. It's not a woman thing. It's a, it's a communication thing. Yeah. You know, and communication is critical in any type of relationship when you're talking about love because that is the the key to bringing it together like you know at how you communicate what you say the 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 language that you use verbal nonverbal other cues and things like that that we build off of that develops that level of trust and you know i i say this in in a lot of um conversations that i engage in and also i try to live it as a practice <clears throat> two things that are critically important for any relationship for me is trust and loyalty you know if i can trust you i'll respect you and if you're loyal to me, that helps me to trust and respect you even more because I know unequivocally, no matter what, come hell or high water, you got my back. Yep. That's that loyalty that in most relationships aren't there. You know, and I, I, I agree with Ebony. It's difficult to have genuine friendships with people nowadays because people don't have trust and they don't have loyalty. Mm -hmm. And then when you connect trust and loyalty with character and integrity, you know, again, if your character is shot, I can't really trust you because you don't have the integrity to hold, you know, a a, a, a true statement or a sentence, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, you, you're going to lie about everything or you, you just can't be trusted. Those things to me are critical. Yeah. Particularly in my marriage. If Especially I can, that lying part. Yeah. You know, it, it, if you, if it, and my, my mother and used I, to say I this. I get the side eye real quick. My like mother my said, whole, if you lie, listen, changes. <laughs> if I feel like you telling me a lie. <laughs> my mother said this a long time ago and it held to be true in so many instances. She said, if you lie to me, you're still from me. 
you know, and it's like, if I can't trust you to be around me, if I think you're going to steal something from me. So, you know, because I, I'm not that everything that I have is precious, but what's mine is mine. And if I feel like I can't trust you with what's mine, whether that's my my family or, or something in my home, I don't want you around me if I can't trust you. Because if you lie, that leads to other uncharacteristic or, or bad character behaviors. So, you know, those are things that, that I think are critical as you talk about love and relationships and, and things that um, are important to keeping those relationships tight and together. I was just thinking if it was any um, other comments. Oh, and uh, Mike Johnson did say to um, Carla, just to defend you, he said that men can cook too. So that that is true. You know, men can cook for the women too, but you but better... But her husband want her to cook for him. Well, you better cook for that man. So, well, don't be talking to her like that. Nah, she know. She know. <laughs> I got I to gotta take up for him. You know, I got to take up for him. I, he, he, he know. He know I got his back. He know I got his back. The, I'm, I'm a ride with him forever. That's my man. So, you know, tell him... Tell him if he's not watching, tell him to watch this and she ain't gonna tell you, him to watch. <laughs> you know I got your back. We've already had this conversation before. So if she ain't acting right, call me because you know we, we we get it straight. Uh what you say, you tired <laughs> Mike said I'm tired of the dry chicken. It, you what? Mike, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. Who is Michael Johnson? That's Mike. Oh, uh, Toya's Mike. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so Mike. I'm with you, brother, because one of the things that not not that this happens in my house, but one of the things I will say is nobody should ever fix anything for you that they wouldn't eat themselves oh, or they wouldn't. Say. You know, it's like if I'm cooking for you and I ain't <laughs> taste it and it don't taste good and I'm just throwing it together, you know, or whatever, you know. That's not cool. So wait a minute. Let uh uh no, cause something shady is in this conversation. No, I'm responding to to to, to Mike's. Um, I'm just comment. trying to make sure. Did you say? Oh, Toya can cook <laughs> her buttholes. Don't even go there with Toya, Mike. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is Toya on? Or, or... I know that's right, Toya. She said you won't get no chicken ever. <laughs> <laughs> chicken is good for you. No, <laughs> but... So, so Toya, you better mix them meals around. But you know what? It might just be chicken, you know, when, when it's convenient, right? But he, what he's... <laughs> What he's saying is... Just put some... No, he said he don't want no dry chicken. So just put some sauce on it. He's talking about my wife on here? Yes, Mike, she's on here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Look, she said, I've been on here for the last half hour. All right, listen. What we're not trying to do... Is break up he nobody's home. Chicken, Toya. Nah, Keep nah, that chicken. nah, but you know, seriously, you guys, Toya and Mike, are I, I love. <laughs> Said we had chicken almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We eat a lot of chicken too. We do, and it's not. It's really. It's because it's good for it. It's, it's no, better for so, you than eating a bunch of beef or pork. So here, here's what we, you know, we'll have fried chicken or we'll have baked chicken or we have chicken Caesar salad or, or you know, we'll have chicken paninis or we'll have barbecue style, <laughs> you know, chicken or we have, just... we have chicken tacos. We have chicken um, <laughs> paninis. We'll have, we'll have um, chicken um, pizza um, on pita bread. But you know, we'll keep it up. You and Mike gonna be we'll, going out to eat together. Hey, Mike. You know, I'm with, we we can we could definitely make you. We we know how all them big greasy steaks. We know and how to. Uh, That's what get you fat. We know how to break and make up the your bird. Heart clogged up. But no, you know, in all in all seriousness, we trying to keep y'all healthy so I, y'all be around. I love how you and your wife promote each other, Mike. In terms of just you know your your social media presence of your date nights and all of those things that are that are critically important and you guys are an example of what we're talking about tonight you know because we need to do that more you know making time for each other and and actually one one of the things the picture that I used today it really um my photographer at my CEO reception uh last week captured my wife at a moment when I was acknowledging her um and the look that she had on her face was priceless because it it just spoke volumes to things and everybody was trying to dissect, you know, what that look meant and everything. And, you know, she was videotaping me, but she had this look 
of, you know, great admiration, appreciation and different things. And that was what I took from it. But I asked her to explain <clears throat> what that was, um, that she was, was going through her mind at the time. And, you know, it was... He thought I wasn't going to be able to... No, I was just curious, you know, I wanted you to respond to the post, but you know, her words were, were very much a blessing to, I knew that, excuse me, but I wanted to hear that. And I wanted other people to see that intentionally because I didn't want people to speculate, you know, because one of the things that I always do and have always done and will always do, even if she getting on my last nerve is promote my family promote my wife, incorporate my wife and children in everything that I do. And one of the things that I said, if you didn't have a chance to watch the video, was that no matter where I work, what I, and I said that in front of everybody you know, present, when I went back into corporate America, I was very serious about this years ago, this was back in 2013. I said, I will not compromise spending time with my family, taking care of myself, or putting the job before anything that's important to me around my faith, my family, and my future. Mm -hmm. And I have not looked back ever since because when I was working, you know, so much at a time where I was spending three hours a day commuting and then, you know, working um, even outside of that, that was a significant chunk of my day that I missed a lot of family time that, you know, I can't get back. But I committed to that uh, going forward. And, I, you know, I live and die by that right now. But she, you know, that picture that, the photographer captured her and what was going through her mind at the time was a reflection of my commitment. And she spoke to that. But it was also the growth and maturity that I've witnessed throughout the years, because that wasn't always your stance. And I get it. Right. You know, most men, um, they want to establish their careers because they want to take care of their families. And, you know, and he, even when it was just he and I, before we even had the children, he was a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Like, and that drove me crazy. And even if he wasn't at work, <clears throat> if somebody called him on the phone to do whatever, whether it was to hang out or to go do something, you know, he was going to jump up and do it. It didn't matter how I felt about it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if I was about to be stuck in the house looking at the walls, he was out. And I, I wasn't even considered. <laughs> right. And, and again, that was that was part of, you know, that that growth process, because for a number of reasons, you know, that was just my my reaction and, and my response to it. You know, it was like, I got to get this money. Or I got to be with these people. I got to network here. I got to do these types of things. And it was all for the fact of and, and what I didn't do was a good job of explaining to her the why. And even if you explain the why, it still doesn't matter about the time that you're spending away from your family because my why was I'm trying to get this money. I'm mm -hmm. trying to do this and it's going to benefit you. So when you are sitting up in the house and you enjoying all of these things and doing that, that's the end result of what why I'm not here. Right. But that don't make it right. right. You know, and th those are the things that we have to come to grips with where, you know, God is saying you have to have balance. You have to do that in a way where all of those things are covered if you going to do it mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it does leave an impact and it opens that door for vulnerability or whatever that ha may happen in your relationship if you don't handle it right because if you, if you trust God that he will provide then if you're doing all of the right things no matter where you might be missing an opportunity God is going to take care of that because you're in the right place doing the right thing at the right time and that's where we have to learn to give those things over to God and over time I've learned to give those things over to God and it has improved our relationship and our family. I don't want my boys growing up feeling like, you know, they have uh, this obligation to the streets and to the hustle and to the yeah. grind to the point where it's giving you high blood pressure and heart attacks and stuff like that. Life is too short. This society and, today, everybody is like, get secure the bag and, you know, I sleep when I'm dead and all. Yeah, oh, I just bro, had to have that, that conversation with my nephew. <laughs> you know, one of my nephews is going through a little something and I won't, you know, expose his, his situation, but he was going through a little something and we were texting back and forth and I said, listen, man, you got to slow down. Because you are younger than me and you having, you know, issue health concerns and issues because you you're not resting, you're not taking care of yourself and you on the grind, but you on the grind for your kids and your family. But what if you're not here for your kids and your family because the grind took you out? Yeah. We got to we got to do better. You know, and I, I pray that I imparted that to him. Like even with me, I stepped down from two boards that I was sitting on and just created more time. We had the a Saturday a few weeks ago where we absolutely did nothing 
And that was one of the greatest Saturdays that really helped me to calibrate because I was like, wow, that was phenomenal to not have anything on the calendar. It felt weird, mm -hmm. but it was what we needed. And then that same weekend, one of my, uh, you know, uh, indirect mentors uh, um, uh, passed away by having a heart attack in his sleep at the age of 60. And that was a wake up call for me. I was like, OK, God, I don't know if you're trying to send me a sign or something, but I get it. And I understand and I have to do what's best for me at the end of the day so that I'm available to them for what you would have called me to be as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a son, as a brother, and as a community advocate and all of the you things. You can get those do. moments back. You can. Especially when it comes to your family members and your children. That's one of the reasons, to um that I love being a stay-at-home mom. I mean, trust me, I, I don't have issues with working. I like money and I like doing certain things and having certain things but in the grand scheme of things for me it's just the time away from my children is not worth it i had a part-time job that i was working five days a week four hours a day and i did that for like two months and even that was killing me it just didn't feel right once i got a taste of being home and being there for my children and when you you know i understand that we as women we do what we have to do because I've had to work full time and take care of my family. And mm -hmm. if that's what you have to do, God will make a way no matter what your way is. But I don't have to do that now. Thank God for that. So for me to try to force a job just because I want things or whatever my reasons might be, it just doesn't make sense. And it just it don't even feel right to me anymore because it's like. No, it's taking me away from my kids. I can't be the best that I can be at home and for them because I'm trying to chase after this other thing. Right. And, you know, I mean, that, but that goes even for those who are, are those of us who are, are working and doing what we do. You know, God said that he will provide, you know, and if we seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness, all these things will be added unto us, which is God telling us to be putting into priority mm -hmm. him first. And if we put God first in everything that we do, I'm serious, y'all. I, I am really getting to a space, thank the Lord, that I try to pray about everything. I want to consult with God on everything that first it has a kingdom focus. And I know God said that he will bless us yeah. with the desires <laughs> of our heart when we get that right. And yeah. I really try to focus on that because God may say, you don't need that job. Mm -hmm. You don't need that, that, that situation that's going to take you away from your family or drive your, your blood pressure up or take you out because you're not focusing on your health. You're not yeah. focusing on your family. You're not there for your children in those formative years that they need you to be there as, as you know, present. And it, it may, again, even with the work situation, that may be temporary. The Lord may yeah. say, you know, between now and the time your children are 15, you need to do this. Right. And then after that, yeah, you can go back and do this and do that and, and pursue that and pursue these things because I'm I'm preparing you for that by the things that you're learning to do while you're here. Yeah. And I, I'm a testament of that. You know, it's things that I went through that have prepared me for my now. But I think that, and again, those are things that you need to talk about in your relationships mm -hmm. as well. But it's all about seeking what God's direction is for you so yeah. that you're able to do the things and prioritize it, the, the things that are important. And again, it's God first and then your family, you know, and, and, and you, take, he, he trust would, me, he going to take care of you. I ain't telling you all that I don't make money because I do make money and God sends things my way. I know how to do hair. Oh, she a hustler. I'm resourceful. I know how to do hair. You know, I have a couple clients and I still have a job, but it's on my terms. It's right. flexible. I'm about to go to work after this and work till 4.45 in the morning. And but my kids going to be in bed. They're going to be asleep. I'm going to miss my baby tonight. But it's one night. I mean, he'll be, we'll be all right. Yeah. We'll, 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 <laughs> well, two nights because I'm working tomorrow. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get some black love at some point, you know, this week. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm not joking, but I'm joking. Um, but no, seriously, you know, I think that it is, it's critical to make sure that we look at love in the context of what God says love is. That's that's primary. That's number one. Number two, you know, being able to prioritize the things that are important to the kingdom and God will take care of your relationship yep. as a part of that because, again, it's focus on God first 
his priorities, be about the father's business. And then the things that God has positioned you to do, you will do well and God will bless you. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I, I just am amazed at when you do things God's way. And I fought God for so long on so many things, you know, from an arrogance perspective, from an attitude perspective, and just from a, you know, trying to please society mm -hmm. and, and, and the things that people say are the right things to do. But when I got to the point where I started doing it <laughs> God's <Carla>. way, <laughs> hey, 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 Carla, I, that's about the time. You, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm inbox you, Carla. Um, but, you know, when I, when I gave it over to God and really focused on doing it God's way, God has opened up so many blessings, y'all. And I, I just can't wait to see what God is going to do based on my obedience and I that that's my challenge to be obedient so I can get the blessings that God has for us and it's not you know material stuff and all of that but it's just the ability to God for God to put you on a platform where you belong and I know that my family is a huge part of that because God is using our family to be a blessing in many ways to society and to black love and to show people that there is a difference out there when people highlight the things that are important and this is real this ain't yeah. fake you know we're not coming on before y'all and posting pictures and doing this stuff because it's fake we're showing you the reality, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, but at the same time, we there's more good than the ugly, you know, and even if it's ugly, it ain't over, you know, right. and those are the things that people need to understand because we don't we don't go through stuff to become a statistic on the negative side. We go through stuff to show people that you can work through it with the Lord at the center because God wants you to go through things to grow you. And as he does that, that allows you to be able to look back and say, you know what, back in 2018, we weren't even having these kind of conversations, right. but look at us now. Or we were on the brink of divorce. And, and because I prayed, which is something that I don't normally do, God immediately responded and gave us an answer that shaped our relationship now where we're looking at things different. And look at how fast God was able to move that. That's a real life conversation that I had with a friend, from, a friend of mine from college because they were going through something in their marriage. And I said, what what you want to bring a divorce? And I said, have you prayed about it? And I said, you know, are, your, your your desire to divorce, is it because of you or is God leading you to do that? Right. And because they prayed, not even coach, they came together as a couple, started having a conversation that God just orchestrated. And now they're at a place where things are being repaired. Those are things that, again, when you trust God in your relationship and you do it God's way, Obedience. no matter how long you've been going through hell, God could turn that hell into a better situation overnight or in moments notice. But we got to trust God because when we give up, and I posted this last week, when we give up, it's almost it's like we're saying that God can't fix it. Yep. And we don't trust God to fix it. Stop listening to them outside voices. It's always a lot of pressure <clears throat> in telling you you should be doing this or doing that. I know because I deal with it. I struggle with God all the time about being a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. because I feel like, well, I need to be doing this or doing that. Like, what's going to happen when my kids leave? And then, I'm, you know, I should go to school. I'm not educated enough. And then they're going to be gone and I'm going to be nothing. Then what I'm going to... No, right. <laughs> that, that and, is nothing but the devil. And you know what? It, what? One of the things that I said to my wife years ago when, when we had that conversation around, you know, what, what I should be doing, what I think I should be doing, I said, you are where God has you for right now for a purpose. You know, and that's the thing that we have to, to come to grips with. Where we are is where God has us right now, even though it may not be where we want to be or where our friends say we ought to be or, you know, you, you have to have this type of degree and, and all of those type thing of things. And the interesting thing is I, I prayed about it and I knew yep. that that was what God wanted. For, I'm the one who said to him, because I started interviewing when we got here, like mm -hmm. a couple, once we got settled, I started interviewing for jobs and I said it to him and I think he thought I was crazy when I first said it to him, like, no, girl. He was subtly sending me a uh, job. <laughs> yeah, but, for. because again, you know, those, those were <laughs> and things I'm that like, I know what God said to me. And I was going on these interviews and they loved me, but they were like, it oh, just wasn't, it, the it just right wasn't fit. working out. And I'm like, and, OK, God, but that was I the mindset. This is what you're saying. <laughs> but, you know, that's such a blessing, too, is a good blessing uh, to reflect on, particularly now after coming from, you know, the, the, the reception the other night, because when we moved here. 
we were already in a mindset of having two incomes and, you know, uh, working and making a certain amount of money because that's what Philly required. Right. right? But my boss that hired me and recruited me here, who was at my uh, reception, <laughs> Carla, you crazy? he said, um, <laughs> he said, what you're going to make is going to cover you and your family. Mm -hmm. Trust me, because I was trying to negotiate a higher salary. He was like, no. He was like, that's what I'm going to bring you in at. You will be fine. Trust me. Mm -hmm. And Lord knows we have been fine ever since we've been here, like not having to need to have her to work. Sure, if she was working, that would be some extra. But then what does that extra money do to our family unit in right. terms of her availability? And that's the thing. And, and, I'm not willing to compromise. Right. And you don't have that, to. You, you know, know, and that's, that's the blessing. Momentarily, when I'm trying to grind to do something, like just recently when I did that, it was because I had a goal. I, I was giving my dad a birthday party. It was like, all right, I'm going to knock out these couple months. But even that, I could tell when it was starting to wear thin because it was like, okay, this is really, for me, compromising my family time. And... I, I can't do this. <laughs> right. But, you know, again, it, it it's that level of first communication. Like, you know, we have to be on the same page about what the end result is going to be. You know, and then secondly, it's the ability to, to understand that the impact of that. You know, if we do this now, then what is it going to do later down the road and those types of things. But being able to be on the same page, like, all right, we're going to grind this out right now. We're going to do that. And it, it's going to build this and those types of things. Right. But then... There's an end, there's an expiration date Absolutely. on it, you know, if that makes sense. And and with that expiration date, we're comfortable with that. And again, we're not trying to dictate mm -hmm. what anybody else does in their home. But the key is communicating about it because that's what builds or breaks the relationship. And you don't want to put your relationship in jeopardy as a result of a short term decision that you didn't discuss and made the other person uncomfortable to the point where it created a, vul a vulnerability in your right. relationship. Carla, so, your comment. I, <laughs> I'm what she cracking said. up. But you know what? You're absolutely right. She said your ministry is to be home to enter my inbox when I'm about to thug out. <laughs> but on a serious note, I realized too that if I was working full time, we probably wouldn't even be doing this right now. Yep. Because I would be stretched too thin. And what God has allowed with me being a stay at home my mom my, my, my relationship is closer with him mm -hmm. i was able to be more active in ministry which in turn it took truly took me out of my comfort zone because i went to sharon baptist church for years and all i did was hide in the nursery with the kids like i i was not like a person who was out in the open real active in ministry i sat on the pew mm -hmm. pretty much and coming here really pushed me outside of that box and not having to be to work full time has given me more time to be involved in ministry. Right. And, you know, again, God prepares you for these opportunities by what he often or sometimes says no to. And we don't understand why God is saying no, you know, because God may say, I'm saying no to give yeah. you the time to do the things that I need you to focus on that are kingdom focused. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, again, that I, it, it just excites me because I even saw, like I said, as I looked at my life, my schedule, my commitments and things that I was touching and doing. God said, is it having kingdom impact? And that's what yeah. I prayed about. I'm like, Lord, no, if it's not creating kingdom impact and, and providing value and also having me to prioritize those things that are important, then I need to step away from it and be okay with stepping away from it, irrespective of what people yeah. are saying that you ought to be doing. But if you're doing it God's way, then you, you can't expect people to understand, you know, but, but God blesses you for being obedient. And then he gives you immediate responses for here's the confirmation that, that what decision you made was the right decision. Yeah. And God has just been doing that and doing that and doing that. But, you know, like Ebony said, it, it's, it's the things that God said, because she applied for many jobs and God was like, no, mm -hmm. you need to be home. We didn't understand that because we were on that, you know, we just moved to Ohio. We don't know what to expect. We got to, you know, buy a house. We got to do all these things. And you got to work. I got to work. We got to figure out who had the kids. We don't even have anybody to watch the kids. <laughs> you know, once, and, then, and then it was like, all right, I'm going to stay home. Then when Jace uh, went to kindergarten, then I started trying again. Yeah, right. I'm like, okay, he's yeah. in school all day. Now I can go to work. God was like, nope. 
Yeah, you know, because <laughs> it, it, it was, it, and again, it was things that we didn't see. God was like, well, who, if something happens in the middle of the day, is going to be available to go get the kids? Yeah. You know, or, you know, because if he's downtown and you're up here and, and everybody's all over the place, then God forbid something happens where you need to be accessible. Nobody's available, you know, 30, 45 minutes in commute and those types of things. Yeah. But we weren't looking at it like that. It was like God had to show that to us by saying no. But we were blessed with the no. And those are the things that, again, we got to trust God for his direction and be able to be very prayerful about it so that it doesn't have that impact on our relationship. Then what would that mean for us, you know, in terms of times and schedules and being able to have our our time right. that, you know, are critical for couples. We got to go. Yeah, we got to go. We're going to have to do we part, gonna have to so do part two. So we got to eat dinner and all of that <laughs> other stuff. But, um, and, and Carla, we saw your request for um, Black Love Part 2. But no, this, you know, again, for, for us to just have this kind of off-the-cuff conversation tonight, I, I can tell that it was God uh, ordained as well because of, of the interest, the passion, and the feedback, and, and the input. So we thank y'all for uh, joining us tonight. Um, and we will, Lord willing, uh, come before you next week. Not sure what day, um, most likely Monday, um, to uh, pick up where we left off. If you have questions or concerns or different things that you want to share, send that to us so that we can prepare for next week and, and you know, be... Um, excuse me, ready to, to discuss this. And we, we you thank too, you, God. Toya. We thank y'all for your participation. We pray that all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. And make Mike some chicken tonight. And, and uh, Toya, don't make Mike no chicken. Make him some um, chicken. Make, or if you make Barbecue, it... Barbecue chicken, fried chicken, chicken Alfredo. Big chicken. Um, you Only know, chick chicken for the rest of this week. Chicken Even tacos. On Love you too, Sasha. Don't, don't make no turkey. Make chicken. Thank y'all for, <laughs> for joining and happy holidays. We, we wish y'all the very best. Um, let us pray out. And again, we'll see you, Lord willing, next week. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just being who you are, God. And thank you for always showing up, Lord God, whether we know that we need you or not. Lord, you're always there. And we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing up and just guiding the conversation tonight and, and, and filling the the void, Lord God, for anything that we as humans and, and just as broken vessels could not fulfill. But we thank you, Lord, for being able to have impact and to be a blessing to everyone that has uh, come here tonight or who will watch this at a later time. We pray, God, that your word is the foundation and that we would seek you to do your business, Lord, so that we, when we represent black love, Lord God, you give us something sub uh, substantial to show the world, Lord God, and let it be real. Let it not be fake or, or manufactured, Lord God, but let it be real so that we can show not just black love, but love that you've called us to be obedient to, Lord God, as you said, to love one another, Lord God. And you didn't say love a black another. You didn't say love a white another or an Asian another. You said love one another. So teach us, Lord God, to continue to love each other as you've called us to, so that when we reflect it and demonstrate it, Lord God, is not a reflection of us, but a reflection of you. We pray for each and every person that this may touch, and we pray that it will bless each and every person that it will touch. We love you, Lord, and all these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Amen, y'all. See y'all next week, Lord willing. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> love y'all. Okay, Carla. <laughs> 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 Good night, Carla. Inbox tell 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 your husband I said um to inbox me if you need to. All right, y'all. Take care.